This is a short video about section 2.2.1 in Stein's Elementary Number Theory book. It's about multiplicative functions. So what we've done already in a previous video is we talked about um, Euler's phi function, also called the Totian function. You might also say phi instead of phi, depending on what you like. But what does phi of n do? So n's a natural number here, and what we're told it does is it takes the cardinality of the set of all integers that are between 1 and n that are relatively prime to n. So uh, just to remind you some rules that we remember, um, if I wanted to count, say, the um, how many numbers are relatively prime to 5 that are less than or equal to 5, well, it would be how many things are in this set, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this case. And so, of course, it's 4. Remember, in general, a rule that we know is for a prime p that 5p is equal to p minus 1. And you see that behavior here. Um, so again, just counting how many numbers less than or equal to n are relatively prime to n. So now we're going to move to is back to the group of units mod n. So suppose you have two natural numbers that are relatively prime to each other. And think about the map, or you might say function if you like. But it's psi, so another Greek letter here. And what's it doing? It takes me from the set that is the group of units mod mn. And it takes, it's a function that goes to the codomain is this product group here, where the first coordinate comes from the group of units mod n, m, sorry, and the second coordinate comes from the group of units mod n. And here's how this map psi works. You take something that's in this group, c, and it spits out the ordered pair, c mod m, comma, c mod n. In other words, just take a turn reducing c mod m first, and that's right here, and then mod n next, and that's right here. Turns out, though, that this function psi between these two groups is a bijection. If you've had some group theory, you know that that's called an isomorphism. Um, we haven't quite shown that this thing has a group operation yet, but uh, if you're thinking that, you're on the right track. Let me give you a concrete example, too, because there's a lot of notation going on with this lemma here. This lemma is pretty important for us. So what if I took psi, and let's get some concrete um, you know, groups here. So let's say I went from the group of units mod 6, so z mod 6 z star, and what I'm told to do is, well 6 is 2 times 3, I see 2 times 3, I'm sorry, 2 and 3 are relatively prime, so I should have then some kind of a function from z mod 6 z star to z mod 2 z star cross z mod 3 z star, so to this product. By the way, too, just so we're comfortable, like what is z mod 6 d star? I can think of it as a set. It should be, what are the numbers between, um, you know, 0 and 5, really, that are relatively prime to 6? And so what I'm going to write that as is this is the same thing as 1 and 5. Those are the only two that are relatively prime to 6 that are less than or equal to 6. Similarly here, this would just be the set 1, and this would be the set 1, 2. And so when I take the product of those two sets, just to remind you, this is equal to, so in other words, this product group up here is the ordered pair 1, 1 is in there. And then there's only one other one, it's 1, 2. And so what we're trying to show is that this function now, um, that will assign this element to one of these, and then it will assign 5 to one of these, is a bijection. So that's what we're going to show. And so what's psi do again? Well, let's see, psi of 1, it should be equal to, well, what we said it should do, if it's still highlighted, you should take 1 and reduce it, mod 2, and take 1 and reduce it, mod 3. And in that case, you just get 1, 1. So what did we just show? We just showed that psi takes the element 1 in z mod 60 star and uh, associates it to the point 1, 1 in this product. Similarly here, uh, what is psi of 5? That would be equal to, and so again, what's the definition of psi? Just reduce 5 mod 2 first and then mod 3 it says. So I should do um, 5 mod 2 and 5 mod 3. And what is that? Well 5 mod 2 is 1 and 5 mod 3 is 2. And so what did we just show? Uh, we just showed that this map psi takes 5 now and associates it to this point. And so since those are the only choices, you see that psi is a bijection. But we claim that this always happens. So in other words, any time that these are relatively prime, this group can be thought of as this product here. So what's the proof of this look like? Well, we need to first show that that map psi is injective. And so to do so, remember, suppose that psi of c is equal to psi of c prime. Um, well, then what does that mean? If psi of c is equal to psi of c prime, well, that means that uh, in the first coordinate, um, m has to divide c minus c prime. And looking at the second coordinate, n has to divide c minus c prime. Well, in particular, 
I know that m and n, they don't have any common factors. So if they both divide c minus c prime, that guarantees me that their product divides c minus c prime as well. This is something you might take for granted too. So notice something that like, um, you know, 4 divides 12 and 6 divides 12, but 4 times 6 does not divide 12 because 4 and 6 are not relatively prime. So whenever these are relatively prime, then the product should divide, in my case, 12. So just that's something you might take for granted. It's something that's kind of simple, again, that you might take for granted. So in that case, though, if um, nm divides c minus c prime, well, what's the group that I'm in? I'm in the z mod mz, z mod mnz star. So in particular, this says that c and c prime are equivalent to each other. We're just going to abuse notation a little and say that these are equal, again, because I'm considering them um, in this group z mod n and z. So maybe, maybe it would be more accurate to write maybe bracket c equals bracket c star, if you like. Anyway. So we've shown it's injective. Now let's talk about why is it surjective. So in other words, why is any element of the product, why does any element of the product look like psi of c for some c, where again c comes from z mod mnz. So why can we say that? Well, let's say that I had somebody that's in the product group here. So there's an a and a b. And uh, if you're in this group, if a is in here, then it's relatively prime to m. And similarly, if b is in here, then b is relatively prime to n. So I've got A and B, and their GCDs with M and N respectively is 1. Well, think about this now. Think about the Chinese remainder theorem, which said that the, the uh, equation X is congruent to A mod M, the system, and X is congruent to B mod N, because these are relatively prime, I know that this system has a solution. And moreover, it's unique modulo M times N. So in other words, I know that there's a solution X. We're just going to call that XC. So where am I in the proof? I know that there exists, that's not a highlighter, is it? I know that there exists C that's equivalent to A mod M and a C that's equivalent to B mod N. And moreover, I can guarantee that I could pick a C that's between one and M times N. Now, what else do I know? Well, I know that well, A is relatively prime to M and B is relatively prime to N. So if C is equivalent to A and B modulo M and N respectively, then C should be relatively prime to the product N times M. Therefore, what we've just justified is that this step here says that C is an element of Z mod MZ star because C is relatively prime to the modulus. And so in particular, you found an element in the domain uh, that gets mapped to this arbitrary point in the codomain A comma B. So that shows that uh, that map's surjective. And you can conclude it's a bijective. So the next part is a definition about what a multiplicative function is. Don't worry so much about why the codomain is the complex numbers here. Um, if you are curious, you can look up, if you know some group theory too, you can look up what are called characters. But we're gonna say that just a function from the natural numbers to, in this case, the complex numbers is multiplicative if anytime you take two relatively prime natural numbers, the function applied to the product should be the product of the outputs. So it should split in this nice way. And what this ties into now is we're going to apply this and we're going to show that uh, Euler's phi function is a multiplicative function as long as, again, m and n are relatively prime to each other. So uh, how does this go? Uh, well, from before, what do I know? What was the point of this lemma here? Why do we start with this? Well, if this psi is a bijection, let me give you a new color too. If psi is a bijection, then that means the cardinality of this set is the same as the cardinality of this product. Well, in that case then, what is the cardinality of this set here? I know that it's phi of mn, right? So I know that this is the set of all numbers relatively prime to m times n, and I know that's what phi counts. Phi counts what that number is. And then similarly here, what should this be equal to? Well, I know what the cardinality of this set is. It's phi of m. And you guessed it, I know what the cardinality of this set is. It's phi of n. So if this map psi is a bijection, then the cardinality on the left has to be the same as the cardinality of the set on the right, which in this case you should multiply. So that justifies that it is multiplicative. And uh, yeah, that really is it. <laughs> so we just justified this right here. So they they sneak in a helpful formula here for, you know, if you can factor a number into its prime factorization, 
In this case, it's not too hard to count that, you know, phi of 2 squared, how many numbers are relatively prime to 4? There's only two of them, 1 and 3. That's where this 2 comes from. And phi of 3, how many numbers are relatively prime to 3? Well, there's two of them, just 1 and 2. In that case, then, phi of 12 should be 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, the important formula that you need here um, is I already know that uh, phi of p is just p minus 1. Right? There are p minus 1 things that are relatively prime to p if I'm only looking at numbers less than or equal to p. Now, what about phi of a prime power, phi of p to the n? And it's kind of sneaky here. I'm told it's the formula, just p to the n minus p. And I wanted to talk about a little of this, and uh, Stein mentions it below. It's because this should count how many numbers are relatively prime to p to the n. <clears throat> and what should that be? That should be, well, how many numbers are less than p to the n, but I'm going to subtract how many of those are divisible by p. And so, in other words, how many numbers are less than p to the n minus how many numbers, how many of those are divisible by p, which is this one here. Maybe another way to uh, kind of look at that is if I was to list out 0, um, 1, 2, blah, 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 up to, say, you know, p to the n minus 1 in my case here, how many numbers are there here? Well, there's p to the n numbers here. If you were to count each of these one by one, there's p to the n of them because it started at 0. Now what I'm saying is I want you to think about, well, how many numbers in this list have a common factor uh, with p to the n in this case? what would they be? Well, they would have to be the multiples of p. So in this case, which of these numbers does p divide? Well, p divides 0. p would divide p in this list. p would divide 2 times p. In other words, p divides every pth number. So if I count how many numbers in this list are divisible by p, that is where I get the formula p to the n over p. So again, that is where this comes from. And now we're saying, so to get the numbers relatively prime to p, I need to subtract these numbers that p divides. So p to the n, and maybe in total here, p to the n minus p to the n over p. Now what's that simplified to? If you were to find something very useful when you're doing some computations with Euler's formula, I'm sorry, with uh, Euler's totient function, or phi function, whatever you want to say, maybe to put it compactly, 5p to the n should be, I'm going to write the last formula down that's actually right above this here, p to the n minus 1 times p minus 1. And you kind of see the algebra in the middle about how to factor that out. But that's a pretty useful formula. And uh, just to show you here, if you were to try to compute um, maybe 5 of 389 times 11 squared, first, um, these two numbers are relatively prime to each other, so I know that it can split into 5 of 389. 5 of 389, 389 is prime, so it should be 388. And uh, 11 squared here, what I should do now, since I have a power of a prime, it should be 11 to the second um, minus 11. And so what does that use? That used just this formula here. And so in that case, you should just do 388 times 110, which is 42,680. So there are 42,680 numbers that are uh, relatively prime to this product here.